Hello everyone, welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Davina. Today is a part of our special series where we will be focusing on different cultural stories and story times from around the world. We'll be partnering with students and teaching assistants from Bucknell University to bring you a special story where each of the st students will read um, either a book or tell you a little bit about the culture that is their heritage and some where they grew up and some just where their families may have come from. So today we will be focusing on the Dominican Republic and the book that I have that I'm going to read is called Dominican Republic and it's by Rachel Ann Cantor. And this is one of our books that is considered a nonfiction book because it tells us true facts about the Dominican Republic. This is the Dominican Republic. Sunny, friendly, and busy. I like the sunshine. The Dominican Republic is a tropical country. It's located on the island of Hispaniola. The island is in the Caribbean Sea, and the Dominican Republic shares Hispaniola with Haiti. So it's right up in here. And this is the Caribbean Sea and Hispaniola. The country has different types of land. Beaches line the coast, Tall mountains and thick forests cover the islands. So see all the tall mountains and the, the waterfalls. The Dominican Republic has many beautiful waterfalls. The country's forests are filled with amazing animals. Huge lizards hide under plants. Colorful parrots live in trees. And the Salina Don, it lives in the forest floor. It's a furry animal that has a poisonous bite, and it kind of looks a little bit like a cross between a possum and a rat, but I don't think I would like that one. That's kind of yucky. But that's one of the interesting animals there. The Taino were the first people to live on Hispaniola, and this is a cave drawing made by one of them. In 1492, Christopher Columbus arrived there, so he went to Hispaniola and he set up a Spanish colony. The Spanish brought slaves from Africa to the island, and the Spanish built many churches. Some of them are still used today. So these buildings are still there and are still being used. Spain lost control of the colony in 1821. Then Haiti ruled the island. In 1844, Dominicans won their freedom from Haiti. And so then they celebrate that freedom every year with parades and they call it national freedom, their freedom every year. Um, and they have their flags there and they have special flags. And one of the activities that's in our, uh, included in our activities list is a flag that you can print out in color. Most Dominicans speak Spanish. And how do you say please in Spanish? Do you know? What do you think, Zane? Right, por favor. Many Dominicans also know some words in African and Taino languages. This is how you say thank you, gracias. Thank you, gracias. Some Dominicans work on farms. They grow plants such as, tobacco, as cocoa, or kaku as they call it, Cocoa is made, is used to make chocolate, yum. And that's kind of what it looks like. That's where your chocolate starts. It starts with the cacao plant, or cacao, cacao. I guess that's the way you pronounce it. I may not get all these words right, but and other people work in tourism. That means they help visitors in stores and restaurants. So because they're in the Caribbean, a lot of people go there on vacations. And so that's one of their big industries. Santa Domingo is the country's capital. It's also the country's biggest city. About three million people live in Santa Domingo. Well, that is a big city. And look, there's even the old buildings as long, along with the new ones. That almost looks like a castle. Dominicans eat many kinds of tasty foods. 
Some meals are made with plantains. It's a fruit similar to a banana, but it's not quite as sweet. And fried plantains can be salted and eaten like potato chips as well. Mango is made of mashed plantains. And it's kind of like mashed potatoes. And it's kind of a starchy vegetable like a potato, even though it looks like a banana. So Dominicans celebrate many holidays. Family and friends get together on Christmas and they often decorate with lights. Dominicans will celebrate Christmas for three months. Wow, look at all those beautiful lights. Many people look at the Christmas decorations in their park. So there's a lot of special decorations that they put up all around the country. A rare material called amber is found in the Dominican Republic. It's formed from the tree resin over millions of years is what they say. And tree resin is like sap. And actually Miss Davina, her ring is made from amber and it has both gold amber and yellow and green amber. Sometimes ancient insects are found trapped inside the amber. And like I said, it can be made into jewelry. And look, there's ants stuck inside of that. That would be kind of cool to have a piece, have an earring or something with a real ant inside. So anybody know what their favorite sport would be? What do you think? You tell me. What, Molly? Well, yeah, they like baseball. It's the most popular sport in the whole nation and many people love to play and watch this game. They also like soccer. So there's lots of different things about Santa Domingo is the largest city in the Caribbean. So it's not just the largest city in the entire country, it's the largest in the whole Rep Dominican or the whole Caribbean. And the population of Santa Domingo, I'm sorry, the Dominican Republic is more than 10 million people. Their money is called the Dominican peso. Their major religion is Catholic. And like I said, it is the, the neighboring country is Haiti. And their flag is the only flag that has the, has the actual picture of the Bible included in their flag. And here is kind of a larger printout of the flag that you can see. So there's, it's kind of pretty cool. And like we said, baseball is their favorite sport. And their weather is year round, it's called, it's tropical. So remember we said it's sunny and warm. So they love, it's nice and warm there. And they're, they have a special kind of dance that's their country's um, most popular dance. Does anybody have a guess what that might be? <laughs> that's a good guess. No, it's not moonwalking. Their national dance is called the merengue. And it's a special kind of dance, and it's got a, a fun kind of music that's fun to move and dance to. But we are going to sing a song that says Buenos Dias, which means good morning or good day. And it's, I believe it's good day. And Buenos is good, and it goes to the tune of Are You Sleeping? And it goes like this. Buenos dias, buenos dias, como estas? Como estas? Muy bien, gracias, muy bien, gracias, you usted, you usted. And basically they're saying, good, mor good day, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you? So they're not only saying, hello, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? Thank you. So let's try that one more time. Buenos dias, buenos dias, como estas, como estas, muy bien, gracias, muy bien, gracias, y usted, y usted. And now let's listen as John reads us the story, Island Born, tells us a little bit about himself and his heritage of the Dominican Republic. Hola, me llamo Juan, and that's Spanish for, hi, my name is John. I'm a sophomore studying psychology and education at Bucknell University, 
And today I will be reading Islandborn, a story by Juno Diaz and Leo Espinosa, and teaching you more about the culture of the Dominican Republic, which is where my family comes from. Every kid in Lola's school was from somewhere else. Hers was the school of faraway places. May was from a city so big that it was like its own country. India and Camila were from a stony village at the tippy top of the world. Mateo had lived in a desert so hot even the cactus fainted. Nu was born in a jungle famous for its tigers and poets. And Lola was from the island. So when her teacher, Miss Obi, told the class, please draw a picture of the country you are originally from, your first country, and bring it in tomorrow. Everyone got super excited. I'm going to put in pyramids, said Dahlia. And I'll draw a canal this long, Franklin said. There's gonna be a mongoose in mine, Nelson yelled. Nelson always yelled. Everyone was talking about their drawings, everyone but Lola. Lola, you see, loved to draw, but she had left the island when she was just a baby, so she didn't remember any of it. Lola raised her hand. She hated raising her hand almost as much as she hated Nelson's yelling. Miss, what if you don't remember where you are from? What if you left before you could start remembering? No problem, Miss Obi said. Are there people around you who do remember? Like my whole neighborhood, Lola said, and they're always talking about the island. Well then, Miss Obi said, maybe, but Lola finished her sentence. I should talk to everyone who does remember. I should draw from their memories. That's a very good plan, Lola, Miss Obi said with a smile. <laughs> Lola started feeling better about the assignment, but when she saw all the other kids chatting excitedly about where they were going to draw, it made her sad. Everyone was remembering their first home, even Nelson who forgot everything. Nelson even forgot his last name once for like an hour. Lola had always wanted to remember the island, but no matter how hard she tried, she never could. It was like a familiar word just at the tip of your tongue, but instead of, the, but instead of a word was the entire world. Lola closed her eyes and tried to recall anything about the island but nothing came up. She kept trying throughout the school day to help focus. She put her fingers on the sides of her head like her abuela psychic did sometimes. <laughs> Are you okay? Her cousin Leticia asked as they walked home from school together. I have to draw a picture of the island, Lola explained. But I was just a baby when we left. Prima, which means cousin in Spanish, you have to help me. I don't remember a lot either, except for the bats. They were, they were as big as blankets and they used to chase me after at night. Blanket bats, Lola pulled out her notebook and began to sketch. Leticia stopped Mrs. Bernard who always sold them crispy empanadas after school. My mom loves making empanadas when we're at home. Mrs. Bernard, what do you remember or most about the island? Why, the music, of course. I love the music. My family always listens to music. The whole country is like the inside of a guitar, <laughs> which is this little instrument right, instrument right here Mrs. Bernard is playing. Like the inside of a drum. You mean like our neighborhood, Lola said? The neighborhood had so much music, it was like a radio with a dial broken off. On the island, there's even more music. There's music, there's more music than air, and everyone is always dancing, even in their sleep before dance. <laughs> even in their sleep, people dance. Sleep dancing, Lola sketched. Leticia led Lola into the barber shop that her brother Jonathan owned. Lola has to do an assignment about the island. She needs to know what you remember most about it. Wepa, <laughs> said Jonathan, laughing. The agua de coco, which means coconut water. How wonderful it tastes when you drink it right from the coconut. Mr. Rodriguez sat up in the chair. 
and the mangoes are the size of your head and so sweet. They make you want to cry, Lola said. She loved mangoes. That's it exactly. How much color there is, and the woman waiting with her, said the woman waiting with her son. Colorful cats, colorful houses, flowers everywhere. Even the people are like a rainbow, every shade ever made. Like us in here, Lola said. Even more color, the woman said. Agua, mango heads, rainbow people. Lola was trying to keep up. The island sounds so beautiful. Why did we even leave? Well, it wasn't all beautiful, the woman's son said. The heat is on you like live bullies. <laughs> the oldest barber muttered, and other things. Like what? Lola wanted to ask, but the oldest barber had already turned away. In the lobby of their building, their cousins ran into Mr. Mir, the superintendent. Leticia called out, hey, Mr. Mir, how can you... Ubi, how can you, what can you tell us about what you remember about the island? Nobody cares about that old stuff, Mr. Muir grumbled. Just be glad you live here. Don't listen to him, said Leticia. Keep going and call me later if you need any help, okay? I will, said Lola. When Lola got into the elevator, she put her fingers on her temples and closed her eyes. Island, she called, like a cat, like it was a cat. But just like a cat, the island did not come. At home, Lola found her abuela at the kitchen table trying to finish a puzzle. Abuela loved puzzles. Abuela, I'm supposed to draw a picture of the island for school, but I don't remember it. Why don't I remember it? Iha, which means daughter. You were supposed to, you were a baby when you left. But the other kids remember, just because you don't remember a place doesn't mean it's not in you. Will you tell me what you remember most, Lola asked. Of course, what I, of course, what I remember most is the beaches. Iha, our beaches are poetry. You know, when you hear your favorite poem, that's how it felt like on our beaches. Fish jump from the waves into your lap, and the sunset sometimes. And the sunset sometimes. The dolphins will come out of the water, and it's to bow good night. <laughs> and up north, where I'm from, there are even whales to in the surf. Beach poetry, dolphins, surfing whales. Lola sketched as fast as she could. Lola's mother stuck her head in from the kitchen. Iha, what I remember most is the hurricane that hit the island right after you were born. Like the biggest, baddest wolf of all. It huffed and puffed and blew thousands of houses into the sky. Where were we, Lola asked, her eyes wide. We were hiding under the bed is where we were, Abuela said. That's right, her mother said. And you know what? You never cried once. You were such a brave little girl. I wish I could remember that, Lola sighed. Well, it happened, her mother said. You might not remember the island, but it remembers you. You should really talk to Mr. Mir, Abuela suggested. He knows more about the island than anyone. We tried asking him, Lola said, but he didn't want to help. Mr. Mir can be a little grouchy sometimes. Let me talk to Mrs. Mir. I bet it you we can help him. Abuela called downstairs and shouted at Mrs. Muir, who then shouted at Mr. Muir. The old people were always shouting at each other. That's exactly how they talked. Maybe Nelson was an old person in training. Go on down, Abuela said. Mr. Muir said he would try to help. Lola was a little nervous, but uh, that didn't stop her from knocking on the, super do on the super's door. Mrs. Muir let her in. Look how big you've gotten, Lola. Mr. Muir is in his workshop. Go right in. Mr. Muir looked up from um, the contraption he was fixing. Your grandma says you've been interviewing people about the island. Lola nodded nervously. Yes, sir, it's for a class assignment. What have they told you? She flipped through her sketches. Bat blankets, more music than air, fruit that makes you cry, beach poems, and a hurricane like a wolf. 
I see, Mr. Muir said. So no one told you about the monster? Lola's eyes got wide. She shook her head no. Even those who know who don't always want to talk about him. Mr. Muir turned toward an old worn map he had all of the island. Our island has always been a beautiful place. It was when I was your age and it is today, but even the most beautiful places can attract a monster. A long time ago, long before you were born, that's exactly what happened. A monster fell upon our poor island. For once, Lola's pencil did not move. It was the most dreadful monster anyone had ever seen. The whole island was terrified. No one could defeat it. It was just too strong. For 30 years, the monster did as it pleased. It could destroy an entire town with a single word, and a whole family could disappear just by looking at it. Lola's curly hair was uncurling with fear. Did you see the monster, Mr. Muir? Yes, all the time. Were you scared? We were all very scared. Lola's heart was pounding. So what happened next, Mr. Muir? What should always happen with to monsters? Heroes rose up, strong, smart, young men and women like you, Lola, and we had very strong men too. They got tired of being afraid and fought the monster. What a titanic battle that was. The whole island shook from their struggle. The monster tried all of its evil tricks, but in the end, the heroes found the monster's weakness and banished it forever. Wow, Lola whispered. What happens to the heroes? No one knows really, it was so long ago. Mr. Muir took off his glasses and sighed. Anyway, you should get back upstairs. It's getting close to dinner time. Thank you, Mr. Muir, Lola said. Thank you for all your help. How did it go, Lola's mother asked. It was really good, Lola looked at the blank page in her hands. Lola spent the rest of the night drawing the island. She started out with one page, but she needed more room. So she added another page and then another soon. And, she, and then soon she had a book. She worked through dinner and she worked in bed and was just finishing the last touches on the cover when her abuela came in to check on her. I remember having to draw an island when I was about in fifth grade and I had my parents help me too because I had never visited the Dominican Republic before then. And so I didn't know what it looked like. I had only heard stories or seen pictures of what my parents looked like when they were younger. So it was really interesting to like hear everyone's different perspective, just how Lola's hearing everyone's different perspective from her family and everyone in her neighborhood. Abuela picked up a drawing of the final battle and she got really still. Abuela, did you know about the monster? Of course, Iha. What do you think, why do you think so many of us are here in the North? Lola put her arms around her abuela. You must have been so scared. Sometimes we were, her abuela whispered, but we were also brave. The next day it snowed. Oh, I'm from Massachusetts. It snows all the time. <laughs> Lola put on her scarf and boots and stuffed her assignment under her coat. Bendicion mami, bendicion abuela. I say that to my parents every time I leave the house. It's a sign of respect in our culture. It means blessing mommy, blessing abuela. You give your blessing to your family before you go anywhere. Bendicion hija, they both called, good luck. Mr. Mir was pushing garbage cans against the curb. Thank you, Mr. Mir, slayer of monsters. <laughs> he laughed, good luck Lola, daughter of heroes. In class, all the students were buzzing about their pictures. Nelson's mother had baked cupcakes for everyone, so it was like a little party. Mrs. Obi hung the drawings on the wall. Now our classroom has windows, she said. Anytime you want to look at another one's first at one another's first homes, all you have to do is look out the windows. 
Then Mrs. Obi reached Lola's desk. So how did it go, Lola? Were you able to remember anything? I tried really, really hard, but nothing came and made me, and that made me feel bad. But then I realized I don't have to feel bad because even if I'd never set foot on the island, it doesn't matter. The island is in me. Nelson snorted. <laughs> that is so corny. It is not. Nelson, be nice, Mrs. Obi said. She and the other students gathered around Lola's desk. Nelson made sure he got real close so he could see everything. Lola suddenly got nervous. Go ahead, Lola, show us. Okay, Lola said. Taking a deep breath, she opened her book. And out burst the island. Wow, guys, look at this. You have the whales, the fish, the music, the dolphins, the blanket bats. You have the warrior people fighting off the monsters. You have a little empanada. Oh, this is making me feel like I'm right at home. Wow, such a beautiful drawing. I hope you enjoyed this story by Juno Diaz and Leo Espinosa. Again, mi nombre es Juan, my name is John, and I hope you enjoy learning more about the Dominican Republic with me today. Welcome back. And remember, we are talking about the Dominican Republic. And we went over some of the things about the Dominican Republic. And we got to hear a story from John. And he talks about some of his uh, growing up times. John had a, fa a favorite song that he remembers always being uh, sung, his parents always singing it while he was growing up as a young child. And that link to that song is included in the description, um, the YouTube link, and you can go ahead and see if you want to try to sing along with it because the words are there. But one of the things that we learned is that the Dominican Republic is the second largest Caribbean nation. It has year-round tropical weather. It means it's always warm and sunny right? And that the national dance is the merengue. Very good. It is the merengue. And that it has the largest, Santa Domingo is the country's what? What is it? The country's capital. And it's the largest city in uh, the Dominican Republic. And it's the second largest city in all of the Caribbean. So those are some of the things that we learned and that they're, what is their um, most, the most common, the national language is Spanish and they do speak some Africanese or African as well. And who knows, who remembers what um, their favorite sport is? Right, it's baseball, very good. It is the baseball is their favorite sport. So we are going to go ahead and we will sing our goodbye song, but we have a different goodbye song today. We have a goodbye song that says adios, and adios is goodbye in Spanish. And it is to the tune of, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. And amigos is friends, friends. So. If you're happy and you know it, so adios, my friends, adios. And it goes, goodbye, my friends, goodbye. Goodbye, my friends, goodbye. Goodbye, my friends, see you later. Goodbye, my friends, goodbye. So adios, mis, am mis amigos, adios. Hasta luego means I'll see you later. And adios. so it's basically the same song over and over again. So we're gonna do this through it three times. Adios, mis amigos, adios. Adios, mis amigos, adios. Adios, mis amigos, hasta luego. Adios, mis amigos, adios. Adios, mis amigos, adios. Adios, mis amigos, adios. Adios, mis amigos, hasta luego. Adios, mis amigos, adios. And you'll have to forgive Miss Davina for not uh, necessarily pronouncing everything correctly. I appreciate your patience. And um, 
I don't mean any disrespect. It's just I don't always know the correct way to pronounce uh, the Spanish words. But we will go ahead and we'll sing that song one more time and we'll try to remember to put the uh, signs in there as well. Ready? Adios, mis amigos, adios. Adios, mis amigos, adios. Adios, mis amigos, hasta luego. Adios, mis amigos, adios. And we will see you next time. Have a wonderful week. And I will see you next week uh, for our regular story time. And it will be live via Facebook at 10 a.m. on Tuesday morning. Or you can watch the recording on Facebook at any time that's convenient for you or by going to UnionCountyLibraries.org, clicking on the events calendar and on the green preschool story time tab and that will take you to both the links for our Facebook page and our YouTube playlist for preschool story time and you can watch the recording as many times as you would like and hear what hear John read the story called um, Island Born and I will thank you for coming and joining us for this special story have a wonderful week adios